celebration of Easter is very interesting because in the really ancient, ancient world, we could go back to the very ancient world as far back as we can go and spring was not always called Easter or spring. We didn't know it as spring or Easter. It was recorded that in the ancient world, they recognized this particular time of year and they called it the marriage feast of the Lamb, the marriage feast of God. Mm-hmm. And they said that God's son was with his mother and they went to a marriage feast. And in the story in the Bible, Jesus goes to this marriage feast with his mother, Mari, Mary, no, Mari, M-A-R-I, not M-A-R-Y. Mari is a Virgo, Virgo the Virgin, the constellation of Virgo. And so Jesus goes to this marriage feast and we are told that his mother uh, when they ran out of wine, there was so many people there that wine was gone very quickly. So the mother, Mari, goes and tells her son, Jesus, to, that the, that the party has run out of wine and she wants him to make wine for the people. So it says Jesus went out and he, uh, and, and he took the water, he got water and turned it into wine. That's a story in the Bible. It's not, History is a symbolic story because that's what happens. Mother, Mother Mari is actually Mother Earth, Mother Nature. Mother Nature asked God's Son, the Son, the Earth asked God's Son to draw water, which it does. It evaporates the oceans. It draws water. And the water becomes heavy and comes over and out over the land and it rains. That water that, that Jesus or God's son has uh, drawn is now pouring over. It's over the fields and it's raining on the grapes and the grapes we smash and make it into wine. So God's son has changed water into wine. It's a symbolic story. The entire New Testament is a metaphor. A symbolic metaphor. And, uh, but men have made the story into something which is supposed to be, uh, legitimately history. When in point of fact, there was no man who rose from the dead. There was no man who died and came back. No one is coming back to save us. Nobody. No one is coming back to save the human race. And when you die, you will not be going into heaven with God's son to see your family. You're going into what is called in the Hebrew, Sheol. S-H-E-O-U-L. Sheol was a word for hell. So you're going into the common kind when you leave this world. You're not going into the heavens with God's Mm -hmm. son. You're going into a hell or you're going into a grave. And for you then, you will finally experience what we call the end of the world. That's right. You will finally experience what is called the end of the world because it's the end of the world for you. Mm. Everybody else will be doing fine, but you're gone. So it's the end of the world for you. And that's why it's a very interesting story when you start looking at Christianity as a metaphor, a symbolic story of the war between light and darkness, between the good and evil. We give us Barabbas, give us the the criminal. We don't want the truth and the light. We can't handle the truth. We want uh, We want to hear what we're paying people to tell us. We want to hear what we want to hear. And so, therefore, the, all the preachers around uh, in North America and all the preachers in Christendom, they will tell the people what they want to hear, but they won't tell them too much, like an education. They're not going to tell them nothing that has anything to do with education or how to read and how to think. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to tell you what you want to hear about how wonderful heaven will be and how your family is there waiting for you in heaven with the Lord and all of that. It's a wonderful story, but it has no basis in fact whatsoever. And uh, this is why I think the the the, what uh, Rodney Dangerfield said was so was so clever and it was really funny. But I think it was Rodney Dangerfield who said that faith. People who have faith, faith is that wonderful quality that allows you to believe something you know is bullshit. 
And so that's exactly what I'm saying, that when you believe something, we call you a believer. I don't want mm. to believe anything. I want to intellectually sit down at the library and read books on ancient theologies and religion and conceptual ideas and where they've come from and spend 60 years looking at the subject of religion. Mm. And finally, I got what I wanted. I wanted to know, and now I know. But now I'm aware, I am now being made aware that you might as well talk to yourself. If you know what's going on, you might as well talk to yourself. Why? Because if you talk to other people, you're going to end up talking to yourself. Nobody's going to want to hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's going to care what, what you're saying. You know, nobody wants to hear the real truth. See, that's, that's <clears> the interesting I, thing I've said a lot of times is that, you know what, if you really start to talk to people about a lot of the things you discover, uh, uh, you, you will, you will wind up kind of lonely. Cause there, there just are uh, not many people who want to hear the unvarnished truth.